So how do you become and make yourself a better you and help your patients become a better you? So I'm talking to Dr. Joe Kraskavich from Minnesota today. How's the weather, Joe? No, oh, it's pretty cold. Actually, it's not too bad. It's about 45 degrees today, but the lake's all frozen over that I'm looking at. And, oh, you know, it's winter. <laughs> it's winter. It's winter. So Dr. Joe Gerskavich is an amazing, amazing plastic surgeon. He's been a friend. Of, we've been friends for 20, 25 years. Yeah. And uh, it's been longer, or even longer. And, and yeah, so, 89. Is it really? Oh, yeah. We, we actually went and did some uh, great trips together in South America. In, uh Love Yes, in Guayaquil, correct? And yeah, uh, yeah. Right. so I've known Joan for a long time. And so you're a very, you, you know, you're a Renaissance plastic surgeon. So tell me a little bit about your background and I mean, where'd you grow up and where'd you train? And then, then we're gonna talk about, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur and then we're gonna talk about a really neat new product that he's doing that I actually think is gonna hopefully be incredibly revolutionary in uh, in breast augmentation so joe tell us a little bit about you thanks rod well i grew up in a little town in minnesota called saint paul and uh trained at the university of minnesota and then um trained at the university of wisconsin and uh like rod said we've been going down on these cleft lip and palate trips for many years and then now i'm an adjunct professor in the craniofacial clinic at the u and then in private practice so we have residents from Mayo Clinic and residents from the university. That's great. So what drives you, Joe? What, what gets you out of bed every day? Well, I think actually helping my patients. Um, somebody asked me why I hadn't retired yet. And I said, you know, when you can change somebody's life with a two hour surgery, I, I just couldn't think of walking away from that. And I think you're the same way, Rod. Yeah, sometimes it takes me longer than two hours to change something. Um, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> no, no, but I think it's about doing what you do, doing what you love, loving what you do. And I think you have that sparkle in your eye. And I think, and also, but you do different things. You know, you, 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 you actually publish and also you're an artist. I can see some of your paintings back there. And, and then you've been a serial entrepreneur. So tell me some of the things you've done. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the hot new topics that you're working on and something that's just come out. Oh, sure. Well, I have invented a, a stapler that um, puts in absorbable staples and, you know, innovation is kind of a leisure activity. So I just, uh, you know, creativity can't be forced. So if you, you basically, what I'll do is when I go through the day, I just try to see a need. If you see a need and you really feel the need, that might be something for you to noodle around in your head and work on. Yeah. And, and so like Insorb was an incredible device, which basically rapidly helps to close the deep layers of the skin. Uh, especially if somebody that's in private practice, it really, it, it, it's, it's fastidious. It actually works well, cost effective. So that's, it was brilliant. So what have you been well, working on? What have you been working on now? Well, now what hit me is we just, I just felt a need for a different kind of breast implant delivery device. When uh, the current devices, we have to turn away from the field, we have to measure, we have to cut. The nurses said they were slowing us down. Joe, tell me, really tell me what what your what is a breast delivery device? Because I'm, you know, we're talking to consumers here, and they're going, "What is he talking about?" First oh, of all, yeah. you you do a lot of breast augmentations, several probably a couple hundred a year, right? I do over 300 every year and have for 20 years. Yeah, so you're an expert in breast augmentation. And so you obviously saw a need there for uh, a more seamless atraumatic and aseptic insertion, right? Because just to tell the consumers that basically when you do a breast surgery, you're putting a foreign body that's an FDA approved implant in somebody so you want to do it in a mega super sterile way you know and obviously right. you're doing the operating room and so what joe is talking about is how can you put an implant in with minimal contact or no contact with the skin because the skin harbor even if it's been prepped can harbor some bacteria and then very in, infrequently it can cause an, an infection. So, so Joe, tell us, so what was your mind going through when there were some things out there, the killer funnel and all, they're all good devices and there's several others, but that's the one that comes to mind. And, and so you were saying, hey, I think I can do something different and better. Yeah, because when you insert a breast implant, 
the implants are different sizes, obviously. And so on the current devices, a lot of them, you have to size the implant, measure it, maybe even cut the device, you cut the device, and then you might have to test it. And my nurses were complaining that it was slowing us down. And so I actually owe it to them. And so it was like, we got to come up with something that's quicker, simpler, less expensive to make and cuts out the measuring and cutting part. And then um, you want to make sure that you don't touch the implant. You know, a lot of times when people put a breast implant in the current devices, they're holding the inside of the device open. They're pushing it in with their hands. Right. And it's like, that's not uh, exactly, um, you know, touch free. So, <laughs> right. So what, what was your epiphany in, in, in forming what you call now the stingray? What was your epiphany going from one that took a little longer, you had to do a little more marking. And what was, what was the one thing that said, what, what was the aha moment in developing this device for you? Well, I, the stingray is a sheet that you just fold over the implant and pop it in and you'll see that in the video. And so that's a whole different paradigm. There's nothing out on the market that delivers any kind of device that is just a two dimensional sheet. And that's why it was so easy to patent too, because there are no patents on that anywhere. Right, and basically, and you're gonna show it here in a minute and, because then I think the consumers are kind of waiting with a bated breath here about, about how this works. And you're putting it around an implant and then you just fold it onto itself and then you're, you're, re you're, re you're set to go. Kind of a no touch technique almost, right? Yeah, it's really t totally touch free. And then it helps prevent that thing they call biofilm, which can form around implants or heart valves or hip implants. I mean, biofilm is the root of all evil. So we don't want it to touch anything. We don't want your hands touching the inside, anything like that. Right. And then biofilm really is something that it's, it's way beyond microorganisms. It's really the maybe even the shell of it. So even if it's a sterile environment, if you can contaminate it with some type of biofilm, and it's, it's really been the harbinger of all the problems that we've had with every implant, hips, knees, eyes. So if they get a biofilm, uh, they can have a real problem. And so in plastic surgery, you know, our goal, especially when we're putting in implants in people, we want to minimize that ability to have a biofilm. So, so Joe, you want to show us that device and then I want to, I'm going to ask you some questions about it and what's been your experience. So we'll show you one video that kind of shows you in slow motion how to use it and what the the important steps are. And then well, the next video, I'm going to show you in real time how, how quick it really is. Okay. All right. You're going to speed it up, huh? Okay. Yeah. No, we didn't speed it up. We're not cheating. I know. I'm just kidding. Okay. So this is narrated then. Stingray is a contact-free way to deliver a breast implant that's easy, safe, and one size fits all. There's no cutting, no measuring. Just moisten the stingray in the implant, and then there's three easy steps after you moisten it. First, you place the implant in the center circle, right side up. This is a mentor, so it comes upside down, so when you plop it on, it's right side up. Second, then you fold the tail over the surface of the implant, so you'll see me do that. But don't fold the wings straight across, left to right, or it will come apart. So you fold each wing exactly in the direction of that large curved blue arrow, which is slightly towards yourself. And you can tell you're folding each wing correctly because each side of the blue tongue will roll up on itself. And then you guide the blue tongue into the incision as the last step and squeeze stingray to slide the implant in, guide and slide. Okay, so that was a demo demonstration. This is you doing it in the operating room, right? This one? Well, it's still a demo, but it's how you do it in the operating room. Oh, uh, okay. So you just plop the implant in the middle. You don't touch it. You don't touch the inside of the device. Just fold it right over the implant. No measuring, no cutting, no nothing. And you just push it right out. 12 seconds. Wow. Dr. Yeah. Tab Dr. Tabitz would have been proud of you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's he was great. a big inspiration too, by the way. Yeah, I know he was awesome. He was an, he was an amazing yeah. plastic surgeon that really pioneered a lot of things in breast surgery and breast augmentation, including you know the you know the no touch technique for um, for breast augmentation. So, okay, well yeah. that that actually it's simple. You know what? It's so simple. That's some of the best things that I see that were so obvious you say wow that's so simple that's so obvious and those are sometimes the most amazing things and this yeah. is very simple so kudos to you joe 
I mean, I Thanks, think also, it, you know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's simple, it works. And so tell me about your clinical experience in using this. Well, right now we're just in the course of manufacturing it. So it's going to be out for clinical use in three weeks. It's after, at least three weeks from today. So by the time this podcast comes out, it should be out and we'll make some nice videos interoperatively and so on. But it's a, it's a class one FDA device. It's already been approved. All the trademarks are out, all the patents are out. So we just have to get the manufacturing done here. So tell us about, tell us a little bit about that, you know, for the consumer, you know, we, you and I know about class ones. Tell us about that, this device and, and what does that mean to the consumer? Somebody who wants a breast dog and they say, yeah. hey, I want to get a breast dog, but, you know, I want the stingray with my breast dog because I hear it's better and less biofilm. So tell me about what that means. Yeah. Well, that's a re really good question, Rod, because basically if something is just inserted temporarily into the body, you'd think of that as kind of a one. Um, for like a suture that dissolves or like the insorb staple, the the uh, delivery device is a class one, but the staple that goes in your body stays there and dissolves as a class two. And then, for example, a hip implant, heart valve, or breast implant, something that's inserted into the body and stays there permanently, more or less, that's a class three. So that's basically, if you want a simple answer, it's class one that doesn't go in the body. Class two goes in the body and stays there for a little while. And class three is like it's in there for a long time. Like a breast implant. Yeah, exactly. Like a breast implant. So, so basically, yeah. this is minimal contact. It's one time use. And can you use it obviously for both sides or you have one for each side tell us tell us about that and, and why do you think it's better than some of the others that are on the market that are now being commercially available i think it's better because it helps protect from potential bio biofilm on the implant because you're not touching the inside of the device and if you want to, we're going to make it so, you know, the cost of goods or the cost of manufacturing is really low. So people want to use us. If you're really a purist and you want to use a second one on the second side, you could do that. But it's single person, no touch. I didn't have a scrub nurse helping me. I don't need someone else to open up the device and hold it open or anything like that. And then it minimizes stress on the shell because that will give, if it's too much pressure on the implant, that stingray will open up just a little bit, assuming you've folded it absolutely correctly. And it's rapid, you know, there's, like I said, no, no calibration, no modification, no nothing. And long-term it should help decrease infection and just inhibit that biofilm that we worry about and prevent capsules. Uh, capsules is a hard scar that can form around breast implants over the years. Yeah, no, I think, I think the biggest things about the, the funnels that are available now is that you're right, it's got, it's got more manipulation you have to do, you have to cut and size it, and then also there has been some things about, you know, it causing shear force injury to the, to the implant itself, and what you're saying here in your experimental data that you had and presented to the FDA that that was not the case, that it actually, it looks like it kind of stretches open a little bit, which is another advantage. Yeah, yeah and how big is the incision? usually that you use? Oh, we've, well, we've done chamois cloth type incisions and plastic incisions. We can get large implants in through a very small three centimeter incision, which is an inch and a half. I'm not saying that you want to do that because you might stress the implant shell too much, but you can really narrow down your incision if you really want to. And some people market them, some plastic surgeons market themselves by really short incisions, even though they're putting in big implants. So my question to you is, I mean, the most common one is the inframemory fold. Can it be placed in through the axilla, through the nipple, yeah. reeler area? Right. That's what prompted the delivery devices for breast implants is in the first place is November 17th when the FDA allowed you to use silicone again. People were doing the axillary approach and they found it was really hard to get in through the armpit. So, yes, this works fine that way. It works fine in all different approaches and yes. it'll be, you know, obviously, obviously the long-term data will show about its biofilm and, and its decrease in that compared to other types of devices in that area that are obviously going to have to be some studies done. And, and so the other thing for surgeons is the cost. So tell us about how, how is it going to be competitive to those that are on the market today? 
And so you, you're saying it's better, it's simple, it's simpler, no touch, 12 seconds. So then everything else being equal, it's about the cost. And, it, and obviously these are cosmetic surgery devices. So basically, you know, the costs are not, none of this is, at least in breast augmentation is not covered by, by any insurance company. Right, now the breast reconstruction of course is through the hospital, but the cost of manufacturing is so low. I mean, when you just think of just a simple sheet, how much less expensive that is, that would be the, your, your the cost to the surgeon is gonna be a lot lower and that would be a good reason to jump ship considering it's an equivalent device. Yes, and I think that's what, uh, you know, obviously it's not always in, in plastic surgery, it's not about the cost, it's about its, you know, efficacy, its use and its well, and, and efficiency. And, and also in, in breast augmentation, it is a lot about time in motion. You know, in plastic surgery, we're not worried about time, but we are worried about it when we're putting the implant in, that needs to not be a long, long time. And you need, right. you know, that's that's the one time, in, and I think that's what people, they get confused when they say, well, we're gonna do the 20 minute breast dog. I think the most important part you need to be efficient on is just what you showed. Putting the implant in needs to not take 20 minutes and putting your fingers all over it and right, those are the things that really get right. you in trouble. Getting hemostasis and all that stuff is very, very important. Of course, that's before you do any of this. So, so what is the take home for the consumer and for the plastic surgeon, Joe, uh, that you'd like to leave with us as the inventor of this uh, for the plastic surgeon? Why should I use this? Well, I would give it a try because, again, it helps prevent biofilm. Single person, no touch, no So It's just a lot simpler all the way around and a lot easier to use. Okay, and cost effective. And for, yeah, cost effective for the consumer. Just ask if they can use the Stingray. And like I say, it'll be, we'll be shipping orders in three weeks. Three weeks until, which is the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so um, Stingray, I like the name. It's, and it's made in America. It's made, yeah, it's made in America and it's shaped like a stingray. And, you know, I wrecked my daughter and son-in-law's Christmas vacation when they visited from Amsterdam one year because I had them doing prototypes. We must have done 100 prototypes over that two-week period of time. And if you don't have exactly the right shape and angle, it won't work. So we finally got it. So it took a while. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You know, Joe, you're you're fantastic. You've been a great friend. Uh, he's a wonderful sure. plastic surgeon. What you see is what you get. I like people like Joe, and they're honest. They're very open-minded, and he's really talented. So helping make you a better you, I think, is really, really important. And I think this this device, I think, is going to help make you a better you and help your patients become and make you a better you and, and also for you as a plastic surgeon. So, so Joe, thank you so much for your time today. Happy thank Thanksgiving you, and uh, to you and your family. And, uh, All right. See you, man. Thanks. Okay. Live the dream.